Hello, welcome back. In this section, I will introduce you to the Spawn City concept and how this helps answer the urban world system challenge that I introduced in the previous video. Past action and concept have proved not to be adequate enough to tackle the complex urban world challenge. In this context, the Spawn City, which is based on the experience of other countries, is being proposed in China as a sustainable alternative. In this video, I will introduce the Spawn City concept. Let's take a look at the evaluation of urban stormwater management philosophy. The traditional approach to urban stormwater management is rapid drainage approach. Stormwater is regarded as a bad things that should be removed to the urban areas as quick as possible. In the Spawn City approach, stormwater is regarded as a valuable resource. The philosophy now is to slow it down, clean it up, and suck it in by increased retention, infiltration, and utilization. A sponge city is a city that functions like a sponge. During wet period, urban stormwater can first be captured and detained. To some extent, this is done by implementing low-impact development facilities at source, such as retention in green space, which is called bioretention. Green roof, proper service, then during the dry period, the stored and filtered stormwater can be released and recycled to the wet cycle. This figure is a vivid description of the spawn city. The new urban development paradigm calls for full use of natural process and elements such as soil and vegetation as part of the urban runoff control strategies. The principle and measure of the spawn city development can be described using six principles. These are infiltration, retention, storage, purification, utilization, and uh, drainage. Of these six principles, infiltration, retention, and storage are the absorbing function of the sponge, which can conserve the groundwater, reduce peak runoff flow, and create conditions for stormwater recycle. Purification, utilization, and drainage result in rational utilization of the resources and water safety, which can reduce pollutant load, utilize rainwater resources, and finally safely discharge the runoff into water body. The aim of the spawn city development is to minimize the impact of the natural cycle while enable urbanization. Remember that urbanized areas result in higher and sooner peak flow the measure implemented in Spawn City will result in a delay in peak discharge. Furthermore, it will result in lower peak discharge, meaning natural wood system. The present measure all contribute to four practical objects of a Spawn City. No pouring in light rain, no flooding in heavy rain, no dirty and odorous urban rivers, and mitigate the heat island effect. In order to reach the objective, the technical route for spawn city development consists of three phases, source reduction, process control, and systemic development. Source reduction refers to the use of low-impact development facility at all feasible land use surface types. Examples of these are open space, rooftop, parking lot, and site walking. Process control refers to the combination and utilization of the green infrastructure, which is the use of the soil, vegetation, and natural treatment system, such as wetland, with green infrastructure. Green infrastructure is conventional infrastructure, such as pipes, tanks, sewers, and engine energy intensive treatment technologies. Systematic development and remediation refer to an integrated approach at water uh, worship scale. Spawn city development is not only about local and individual measures, but these are all part of the large scales 
systemic and integrated strategy. It is at this scale, and uh, the integrated nature of the Spawn City become very clear. In the next clip, you will see a case study example where the Spawn City concept is implemented in a Chinese city of Pingxiang. Here, you will see the six principles in practice.二零一五年四月，平乡成功申报成为全国首批十六个海绵城市建设试点城市。在三年试点期内，平乡市将根据建设自然期存、自然渗透、自然净化的海绵城市要求，重点围绕新老小区、公园广场、道路建设和改造、